Okay, so this is the fitting we will be changing. So we're gonna have to pop that clip off. I'll grab my pick. And use my phone as a um, assistant in helping. If I can get a good angle. This is tricky, but it's after fighting with this thing for like an hour. Finally, uh, got the clip. Let's see if I can go and grab the clip just to have an extra one. Okay, so with the 18 shallow and busting your oh, it didn't hit the ground. Well, I got the fitting out and it fell on the ground. I don't care. Whew. So, if you take the cedar hose off, right there, tilt it right there, and you have basically like a straight shot. It's like right behind there, whatever that is. You see the fittings just push out of the way. It actually threads in right there. So I got the old one out. I dropped it. It should be somewhere down there. Hopefully it'll fall out. And I will get the new one ready. And show you my contraption of working on this thing. So you put your trash can. And it's basically the perfect height, so your chest can be right here on this. And then you just work on the engine. Sorry it's so blurry, it's iPhone quality is garbage. So here's the new one. And you have to... I don't know why this camera garbage. You basically have to pop that clip out and pull the yellow thing out. Not really sure why the yellow thing's in there. Okay, so I got that fitting pulled out, threw some assembly grease in there. We will thread this back in and then snap that fitting in. You can leave the clip in there because the way that the uh, hose snaps into it, it pushes the clip outward just enough to go past it and not push the clip out. And this thing looks extremely similar to the other one on top of the turbo, but it is not. I think it's a slightly different thread because here's the part number for the one in the back of the engine for the upper uh, upper coolant on the passenger side and driver side and then these ones are for the turbo itself but they are I think they're the same thing BL3Z6A96 Eight. Okay, so this one's a C and that one's a B. Okay, just different threads. So, there you go. And just a little bit less threads and a little smaller, so let's go throw this bad unit back in. Get back up my stair climber 10,000. Move this little thing over here. Stab my ribs. And you can you can just about put your hand down here on the lower control arm to balance yourself by your back here. Let's see if I can put this one on without dropping it. So it goes somewhere in here. Right there. Oof. Oh, don't drop, baby. Hose is pushing on the back of my finger as well. Oh, goodness. Uh, 
heard that one hit the ground. Oh. Whoopsie. This is such fun. Okay, so there's our point lost. And this is the one that's good. This is a workout. I'm gonna need a raise after all this. strap is right here in the way. Okay, so with laying completely on the car, you can stick your hand down through this hole, and then the, let's see if I can find it. You can probably see it right here is the, yeah, there we go. That's the cool line for the turbo. So you can just get your thumb on there and push it back just a little bit like that. And then throw that in, and then we'll just go like this and snap that in once you get it tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it down and then pop this baby in. And put the heater hose on and then bleed the system. So, yep, here we go. Okay, so, you can see, potentially, right there, the new one is installed and that the ground strap is right, very annoying in the way. You can see it's in all the way. Pretty sure I heard it snap, so we're good. Like I said, you can wiggle that from over here. Just get your hand in there and do that maneuver. Get my hand out of there. Get this heater hose back on here. Right there. And we will get that pushed further down, all the way back on, just like that. Right there, you can see, it's back on. So now we'll do this thing and we should be good. Oh. And I also took this cover off right here, which holds the engine cover, so that this wasn't digging into my wrists. And just like that, we got that little plate back on. And I just replaced it yesterday because I noticed it was leaking. And I'm too cheap and too lazy to pull the turbos off because this one, let's see if I can do this. Right there on top was leaking. You can see my assembly lube was on there. That one was leaking, so I replaced that one. You can see how the coolant was still leaking from there. Whenever I just took that hose off, so I changed that one, and then when I turned it on, you could hear it going tss, 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 from coolant dripping from that back one down to the exhaust. Whew. So I turned it on, and it does some coolant in it. Get so our uh, coolant ready is orange. We'll get up here. Okay. Right on. Heat. Where am I? Oh, 
Let her idle again. See how smoky it is in here. Gonna climb back up here and make sure it's still not leaking. I just had a lot to burn off since it leaked out like a, a gallon maybe. You can see how cool it's went back down. It was at the top of that line, so let me pause this and then I'll jump up back there and Make sure it ain't leaking anymore. And I can also hear the PVC valve chattering. So I need to change that bad boy out too. But let me get back there and make sure it's not leaking. Double check this one since we had that hose twisted around. So you can see it's still burning off and that that one isn't leaking. This thing's smoky. And another thing it's um, like a telltale sign that you have a cooling issue is if your AC works sometimes, like say intermittently, which should be sometimes. Um, sorry, my light just died, so it confused me what was going on. So if your AC works sometimes, then it could be a coolant issue because if you don't have enough coolant, then your engine is going to get up to temp quick and then your ECU is going to recognize that like, hey, we're running a little bit too hot. If we run the AC, then you will have more heat. So that's because the condenser coil is in front of the radiator. So if the condenser coil generates a ton of heat and the engine's already hot, it's just gonna make it that much hotter. So it's a fail safe to turn the AC off, which this thing never blew cold. And now it's ripping wide open. You see, we're still good on temperature. Nice and hot, and burn that uh, cooling off the exhaust. And then now we're going to go and you want to turn off the AC. And you want to go to max heat. Sorry about that, my phone died, but luckily there's a phone charger in here. So once it's up to temperature, you're going to start burning off all that nasty coolant. Obviously, still going back and forth, checking to make sure it's still not leaking. We are not leaking, so we got the temperature. We had the AC on so that the condenser coil would get real hot and pull that hot air across the radiator. Now we got the heat on max, just so that all the coolant can circulate through the heater core and get any bubbles trapped out of there, which also revving it up to like anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 helps uh, move that coolant around super fast to get any trapped air if there is any out and the driveway is kind of a slanted up so all the corners is going to move around real nice and the air pockets will go to the highest point which is going to be the expansion tank up there so i'll feel the back see how warm it is Literally not 
not blowing. So that's another cool trick we got to address. So now we'll put this to max coldness. So something with the blend doors and allowing air to blow because now it's blowing. Okay, so let's put this. Back to low. Got a bunch of more smoke just came out. I'll check that in just a minute. So got the AC on. Okay, the rear's getting cold, so now we'll do a max AC. Just to generate more heat in front of the radiator. And I'm gonna go out there and make sure it's not leaking anymore. Hopefully my phone is charged up enough so that I can do that. Because I just want my phone as a, uh, a mirror. And we'll go check that out. And then if it's not, we'll top off the coolant and then we will go ride it around the block. And my phone died, but I drove it around the block, came back, no more smoke. Uh, it's running great. AC is still cold. Uh, heat works good. So I'm going to keep on driving it. And then pretty soon we will address the rear air conditioning issues because it does click whenever it's cold. And uh, apparently it doesn't blow whenever it's hot. So we'll get that squared away and make a video about it. And we'll keep on rocking and rolling, getting this baby squared away. Actually, for the baby and my wife. So, yeah, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.